Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today, we're tackling something uh, really practical. We're looking at how you can install Open Project, which is a pretty powerful free project management tool specifically on Windows 11. Right. And our mission here really is to cut through any maybe perceived complexity. We want to show you just how straightforward it can be to get a full featured project management system up and running. You know, something where you control your projects and critically your data. No need for those pricey cloud subscriptions. Okay, let's unpack that. So open project, it gets mentioned as a free alternative, but sometimes free makes you think, well, is it limited or maybe super complex to set up? What makes it compelling? Well, what's really compelling is that Open Project gives you this huge suite of tools. We're talking agile boards, Gantt charts, task management, team collaboration features, mm. the works, and it's all self-hostable. Self-hostable, meaning you run it yourself. Exactly. So you're not just getting a free tool. You keep complete control over your own data. You can tweak workflows to fit exactly what you need, and you avoid getting locked into some vendor's ecosystem, you know, with costs that just keep climbing. That level of control does sound like a game changer, but uh, setting up open source software like that, it can sometimes feel a bit daunting, can it? Is there a trick to making this open project install easier? Uh, yes, there absolutely is. And the, let's call it the secret weapon, is Docker. What's fascinating really is how Docker works. It basically puts open project inside its own little virtual container along with everything it needs to run. Okay. So it runs reliably, doesn't mess with anything else on your Windows machine. It basically solves those classic, well, it worked on my computer, headaches. Makes complex software much more accessible, even if you're not, say, a deep tech expert. Right, that makes sense. So step one is actually getting Docker installed. How does that work for someone wanting to, you know, get this running? It's surprisingly intuitive, actually. You just head over to the Docker website, look for a Docker desktop for Windows, download the installer and run it. Pretty standard installation then. Very standard. You just click through the steps like most software. Uh, once it's done though, it'll ask you to restart your computer. Definitely do that. It just helps make sure everything's set up correctly in the background. Docker really lays the foundation here. Okay, so Docker is installed, computer restarted, it's humming along. What's the next move to get open project running inside Docker? So once Docker desktop is actually running, you'll usually see its icon in your system tray the next step is to open up the command prompt. And crucially, you need to open it as an administrator. Ah, right click, run as administrator. Why is that important? Well, you need those higher level permissions so Docker can actually create and manage that virtual environment for open project properly. Mm. Is it interacting with your system at a deeper level so it's kind of a standard security thing for these kinds of operations? Mm -hmm. Got it. And then from that admin command prompt, it's just one command, right, that tells Docker, go get open project and start it up. Precisely. You'll type in a specific command. We won't dictate the exact text here, but it's readily available in the open project docs. This command tells Docker, okay, download the open project image and run it. And that takes a bit of time. Yeah, it might take a minute or two, maybe a bit longer, depending on your internet speed. Yeah. It has to pull down all the software components, but the key is it's completely automated. You just let it do its thing. Okay, so the command finishes. This brings up a pretty important question, I think. How do you actually see it? How do you access this shiny new project management tool? Is there another complicated step? No, not at all. This part's remarkably simple. You just open your favorite web browser, Chrome, Firefox, Edge, whatever you use. Mm -hmm. And in the address bar, you type localhost, then a colon, then 8080. So localhost, pin 8080. Hit enter. Localhost 0.8080. So that's like my computer talking to itself on a specific channel where Open Project is listening. Exactly that. Yeah. Localhost is just shorthand for your own computer, and 8080 is the default port or channel Open Project uses. So typing that address tells your browser, hey, connect to the Open Project running right here on this machine, and bam, it should pop up. Ah, okay. And here's where it gets uh, really interesting, I suppose. The login screen appears. What happens then? The defaults are just admin and admin, right? That's right. Username.admin, password.admin to type those in. But and this is important. As soon as you log in for the first time, Open Project will force you to change that password immediately. Which makes total sense for security. Absolutely. So you'll be prompted. You need to create a new, strong, unique password right away. Make sure you save that somewhere safe, like a password manager. It's a small step, but super critical for keeping your project data secure. So you change the password, save it. And then what? What does that mean for you, the user? It means you've done it. You've successfully installed Open Project on your Windows 11 machine. 
you're logged in, you're ready to go. You can start creating your first project, adding tasks, maybe inviting team members if you have them. You've got a full-fledged, powerful project management system running locally. Wow. So just like that, really, with Docker and a couple of steps, this powerful, free, self-hosted project management tool is ready to use. It really does make serious project management capabilities much more accessible, doesn't it? It absolutely does. It puts the power back in your hand. And, you know, maybe a final thought to leave you with. Consider how using free, self-managed tools like this, like Open Project, could fundamentally shift how you approach not just work projects, but maybe even personal productivity or managing your own digital life. What other possibilities open up when you start taking direct control of your own data and the software you rely on?